I posted this photo on my Instagram last week and it was very well received. You guys sent me loads of messages saying how much you love this photo uh, and it was featured on a few feature accounts as well. So thank you so much for all the support. And I thought that this week I would show you how I edited that photo. I had a lot of compliments on the editing style um, and it's something that I'm kind of trying to develop. So I'm gonna run through exactly how I edited that photo uh, and show you kind of this new style that I'm experimenting with so you can maybe try it out yourself. Let's get into it. Okay, so here is the raw photo, and as raw photos go, it's not too bad. This photo I took in Bath. I went up there last weekend for a day um, and took some photos. I'm really happy with how this shot ended up coming out. And the raw photo, as it goes, it's not too bad. Sometimes my raw photos are very dark, so we won't have to do too much kind of salvaging here. We've got quite a lot of editing freedom, which is always really nice with your photos. If you are interested in following along with this tutorial, you can find this exact image down in the description, um, and you can give it a little edit as well as we go along. Uh, maybe if you want to share that on Instagram once you've finished, uh, maybe with your own editing style, tag me in your stories or wherever you decide to post it and I will come and check it out. I'd love to see what you can do. The first thing I always do with my images is crop them. Um, so we're gonna just start off with the crop tool. Sometimes I'll do this when my images is finally edited, but with this image, I kind of know exactly what I want. I want to cut out a little bit out of the bottom. There's quite a lot of distracting elements down there, um, but we want to preserve obviously all this beautiful um, abbey, which is, this is the Bath Abbey. Um, and we wanna make sure we're not cutting off that flagpole. Might just wanna remove a little bit of this building from the left-hand side, because it's not really as pretty as the one we're trying to show off. So I'm pretty happy with that kind of crop. Um, we're emphasizing all the building. And the other thing I'm gonna do in that tab is press auto and just straighten up our building. Because if buildings are wonky in your photos, it doesn't look the best, it looks a bit weird. So um, having that just set to auto fixes all that problem. And uh, we've got nice straight buildings. Okay, so once we've got our cropped image, the first thing we're gonna do is reduce our contrast quite a lot because we are gonna add a bunch of contrast through the tone curve rather than this contrast tool because that contrast tool doesn't give you uh, that much control over where that contrast is being placed, whereas the tone curve gives you a lot more freedom. Um, we're gonna head down here, we're gonna head to the point curve. You might see this other curve. Um, this one's a little bit less precise. So we'll uh, move over to the next kind of dot here. And we're gonna create an S curve. An S curve is essentially a kind of contrast curve, brings down those blacks in your image and emphasizes the highlights. So that's the kind of thing we're going for. We've got a nice contrast introduced here. It's looking a lot more real again. Um, and we're gonna head over to the next tone curves. And these tone curves allow you to kind of control the different colors and tones that are in each of the shadows and the highlights. And it's a really powerful tool. It needs to be done carefully because it can just com completely ruin your image. But there is so much uh, kind of potential unlocked in your image once you understand how to use the tone curve. First thing we're gonna do here in this cyan and red one, we're gonna just introduce a bit of contrast. Just bring down those mid-tones and then bring up the highlights back to a kind of more neutral stage. And it will look very strange to begin with because um, of course it is not looking how we want it to, but eventually it will find its way to the right point. Moving over to the greens and the magentas, I think we're gonna add in a little bit of green to the shadows. We're gonna lift those up a little bit, not too drastic. Introduce a little bit of uh, green into the highlights there and bring the midtones into magenta a little bit more. That's probably quite good. And of course you can go back and adjust this after you've made your other adjustments if you see that something needs to change. So once we've messed with the tone curve, of course the image is looking a little bit different, but it's looking a bit dark. So let's make some further adjustments in the basic panel. Um, I'm gonna bring up the exposure just to kind of reveal more of our image. We're gonna bring it up quite a lot because um, I just wanna make sure we can kind of see what we're working with. We can always bring it down later if we need to. And that is kind of blowing out the sky. So we're gonna bring down the highlights a fair amount pretty much all the way, and that reveals our sky again. It's amazing how much detail these images have for you to be able to play and re recover highlights and shadows, and that's really nice. So we're in a much better stage here. Um, I'm just gonna bring up the blacks even more. We're just getting all that lovely detail in that kind of darker area. White balance across a little bit. I wanna add in a little bit more of a yellow tone. Then we're gonna scroll right to the bottom of our Lightroom panel tab whatever you want to call it, um, and we're going to head down to calibration. And calibration is one of the most useful tools in the whole of Lightroom. It essentially changes the way that Lightroom sees each individual color. So it can make your red seem a little bit more orange, or your green seem more yellow, or your blue seem more magenta, uh, more like purple, or kind of aqua color, um, and it's a super powerful tool. So we're going to just move our reds more towards oranges, and this is going to add a lot of crazy saturation, but 
we are going to recover it when we go up to the later tabs. Um, and the same thing for the greens, we're going to just move them across pretty drastically towards the kind of more greeny area. And then the blues, we're going to bring back towards aqua. And then you look at that and you go, classic teal and orange look. It's what a Sony shooter, what a classic. But don't worry, it's not going to end up like this. So we're going to just bring down the saturation of that a much. And that does bring down a lot of that orange saturation. And while we're here, we're just going to uh, click on remove chromatic aberration and enable our profile corrections because that just gives us a much better image. And we haven't got any of that barrel distortion, which we don't really want in our image because it makes our buildings look funny. And then let's head up to our saturation tab here. So we're going to bring up the red. We've got some nice red details towards the bottom here. So I want to emphasize them a touch. We're going to bring down our oranges just a little bit more but we're going to bring up our yellows which kind of adds a little bit towards this kind of highlighted area can't really do much with the greens there's not many greens in this image we'll bring down the aqua a little bit bring down the blue and here in the hue tab i'm going to turn our reds a little bit more orange i'm going to turn our oranges a little bit more yellow by putting them up a little bit nothing too major what we're going to do now is to get a bit more of a realistic image we've got a little bit too little contrast now so we're going to just bring this contrast back up into our image probably around something like that and of course now we've got a much more vibrant and contrasty image but we're going to get to that dreamy look towards the end of the edit just bring these yellows towards a little bit more orangey to bring back a bit more of that beautiful orange color we've got in that stone Bring the greens all the way to yellow, not that there is many greens, but any that are there, they'll kind of blend in a little bit better. We're going to bring the aqua colours a bit more towards the blue. We don't want it to be too teal and orange or aqua and orange, whatever you want to call it. But we will bring the blues down just a touch. I'm getting to a stage where I'm pretty happy with this image. Um, one of the things I am going to do now is kind of introduce that kind of more dreamy look. And that's achieved by reducing the clarity. Many people, when they start editing, they grab this clarity slider and they drag it all the way to 100. And for some reason, we all used to think that looked amazing. And they were like, wow, that looks so sharp. It looks so cool. But real in reality, when you look back at your photos that you edited with that kind of clarity, you're like, what is going on here? So we're actually going to reduce the clarity by quite a healthy amount here. And that, as you can see, introduces this beautiful kind of halo, uh, soft, dreamy effect. And it's just one of those effects that I'm really loving in my photos. Kind of, yeah, it makes a softer feeling to everything. Um, and I feel like it makes images less harsh. Um, and I'm just really enjoying the look of it so far. So that's how you get that kind of dreamier look. I might even bring it a little bit further. Just really emphasize that kind of dreamy look. That's looking pretty good to me. Uh, we're then moving on to kind of our final touches here, our very subtle improvements. Um, and here we're going to head down to the color grading panel. This is a super powerful tunnel. It, tunnel? <laughs> it's not a tunnel. It's a very powerful little tool um, that allows you to just add colors into certain areas of your image, such as your shadows, your midtones, and your highlights. So I'm going to introduce a little bit of purple. Nothing absolutely crazy. Um, it's probably hardly noticeable. If I just turn this off and on, you almost can't notice it at all, but it does just cool down and remove some of the green tinge that we had down here in this uh, black area. Um, and then moving on to our mid-tones, we're going to add a little bit of a yellow look to this. It's very subtle. We're really hardly pushing this. And into the highlights, cyan, I think, is probably the way to go here. That is probably pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. I'm going to increase the blending to 100 so it's nice and smooth. And of course, then you start to see this blue kind of ease into the image a little bit more. As you can see, it removes a lot of that orange look. One of the things I'm not liking about this image is that we're getting a lot of distractions in the bottom. So I'm going to head up to our masking tools. Again, another super powerful tool in Lightroom that allows you to do selective editing, um, which is you know where you select a part of your image just to edit and you kind of leave the rest as it is. So we're going to head up to this masking panel. We're going to create a linear gradient. You can press M on your keyboard if you want a little shortcut. Um, and that creates a new mask. We're going to drag this down uh, from the bottom and we're going to drag it quite large, bring it down so we're not affecting the beautiful cathedral. I mean, like that should be pretty good. And we're just going to bring the exposure down just a touch, like not even a whole stop, 0.75 of a stop, something like that. It's just going to darken down the bottom of the image so that the eye isn't absolutely drawn to it because I'm not trying to completely get rid of it, but I just don't want the eye to be drawn there first. So that removes the attention from that part of the image. And then one of the final things that I like to do is add a little bit of grain. I know it sounds really stupid because we pay lots of money for these fancy cameras and then we end up adding grain, but I like to add a little bit of grain, just like 10, 
10% green to our image. It's hardly noticeable, but just adds that little extra feel. It's all about the tiny little details when it comes to your photo editing that makes you stand out from the rest. This photo could potentially be a little bit more warm just to make sure we're still maintaining that nice orange and uh, stone look. But of course you can go around fine tuning all the little adjustments, but that is pretty much how we got from this raw image of this uh, abbey in Bath to this. So that's about it, that's the final image. Um, I hope you did enjoy this video. Um, I hope you found it useful, kind of experimenting with a new editing style. I always find it really interesting to see how different people are editing their photos. Um, so I hope you did enjoy this video. If you did, make sure that you leave it a like. And if you do want to edit this raw photo for yourself, there is a link in the description so you can download it and mess about with it as much as you like. And if you do decide to post it, um, make sure that you tag me so that I can see what kind of edit you've done and I'll make sure to leave you a comment. And I'll be really interested to see how you approach the same photo. I'm really happy with this one. It's one of my favorites I've taken this year and I hope there's many more to come. A little quick channel update from me. Uh, I'm now uploading videos every Tuesday and every Friday. So make sure you stay tuned, get that notification bell on and subscribe so you don't miss any of my videos. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you on Tuesday.